today's uh, topic will be on bone loss and patterns of bone destruction. Uh, so I had a lot of uh, requests uh, for uploading videos on flap and osseous surgeries. But I would suggest before we actually uh, go into those topics, it is better to understand how the bone loss occurs and the patterns of bone destruction uh, to get a better understanding of those topics. So now let's get started. Periodontitis, as we know, periodontitis is the inflammation of the tooth supporting structures, which means that it's going to affect your periodontal ligament, it's going to affect your bone, it's going to affect your gingiva, and it's going to affect your cementum. So why is it that we give so much of importance to this bone is that once bone is lost, okay, once you lose bone, you lose the tooth also, okay? Now, the normally if you see, bone formation and bone resorption stays in an equilibrium which is being regulated by various local and systemic factors. But once this equilibrium is disturbed, meaning bone resorption gets increased, what happens? Naturally, your density and the height of the bone gets reduced. Okay? Now, the level of bone actually says us whether there is any past pathological activity. Okay? But only if we see through the changes which is happening in the soft tissue wall of the pocket, we will get to know if there is any present inflammatory condition is there. Okay? Now, coming to the causes of bone destruction. So, bone destruction, first cause will be extension of gingival inflammation. Next, you have trauma from occlusion. Then, bone destruction by systemic disorders. Now, uh, first let's discuss about extension of gingival inflammation. This is the most common cause for the bone destruction to happen in periodontitis. Now, once the gingival inflammation reaches the bone and it gives it starts an initial bone loss has happened that is when a gingivitis lesion becomes periodontitis and for this transition to happen this has to be accompanied by two factors okay one would be composition of your block okay meaning that uh, there will be more of gram negative and motile organisms as the disease progresses. Then the second factor would be this one which is cellular composition of infiltrated connective tissue. Meaning there will be lot of plasma and blast cells as the disease progresses. Okay, now let's discuss histopathologically how is this happening. Okay, how is this causing this bone destruction. So first, uh, this is the plaque which is getting accumulated. Okay, once it gets accumulated, what it does is that this will produce a gingival inflammation. Once the gingival inflammation is produced, it extends uh, through the collagen fibers. Then it follows the course of the blood vessels and reaches the bone. Now, the inflammatory pathways by which this extends from gingiva to the bone, I'll just discuss in detail. First, let's see. Interproximally, what happens is that it extends from gingiva into the bone. Otherwise, from the bone into the periodontal ligament. Otherwise, from the gingiva into the periodontal ligament. So, these are the three ways by which interproximally how it is going to spread okay next we'll see this is a facial surface of the tooth okay and how is the uh, inflammation spreading here first it will be from gingiva to the outer periosteum okay gingiva to the outer periosteum then from the outer periosteum into the bone and from the gingiva into the periodontal ligament so, these are the three ways how the gingival inflammation extends into the bone. So, now that we know that it has extends to the bone, I will just, uh, you know, uh, zoom this picture, okay. Now, what happens, you know, now that 
they it is extended to the bone it will start infiltrating the marrow spaces okay these are the marrow spaces now once it it has reached the marrow spaces what happens is that it will be filled with some leukocytes and fluid infiltrate okay then there will be lot of blood vessels increased blood vessels will be there in this area in the marrow spaces then you will have lot of proliferating fibroblast then what happens is that there is the number of osteoclast and the macrophages increases so now if you see this osteoclast is being lined up what they do is that they will uh, uh, try to create that hardship lacunae and they'll try to start the resorption from within okay and this will lead to what will happen thinning of the bony trabeculae and thereby density and bone destruction occurs okay cause of bone destruction would be trauma from occlusion i have done an earlier video of how it causes bone destruction i'll just add up the link at the end of the video so the next third cause would be a bone destruction caused by systemic disorders so here i told you that the bone formation and bone resorption are maintained in equilibrium by local factors and systemic factors so if there is any disturbance in the systemic factors what happens even a small inflammatory lesion would be magnified in this case okay so uh, the conditions which will cause this periodontal bone loss will be osteoporosis okay and certain generalized skeletal uh, deformities like uh, which occurs in hyperparathyroidism okay hyperparathyroidism histiocytosis and leukemia all this would cause periodontal bone loss but the way it causes periodontal bone loss is not the mechanism of how it is going to cause periodontal bone loss is not going to be that which occurs in the usual periodontal problem now let's go to a concept called radius of action uh, this was given by page and schroder what they did was they took warehouse measurements and they told that for this plug okay to induce a bone loss the minimum range of effectiveness would be from 1.5 to 2.5 mm if this goes beyond 2.5 mm then there will be no bone loss okay now and one more concept what they said what imagine this to be the tooth okay this is your interproximal bone if this is more than 2.5 mm there is lot of chance that you get an angular defect but if this is a narrow space instead then you will have a horizontal bone loss okay now coming to what is rate of bone loss lo and colleagues did an uh, study on sri lankan tea laborers where they had no oral hygiene and no dental care okay and they found out that when they just studied throughout the year along 0.2 mm of bone is lost facially and 0.3 mm of bone was lost proximally okay now and also what they did was they divided the uh, uh, people into three subgroups okay depending on how much of loss of attachment is happening in one year so now we you would think that why am we speaking about loss of attachment okay when we were actually saying about bone loss but see when loss of attachment happens normally after 6 to 8 months definitely there would be bone loss so with this you can actually uh, you know identify the bone loss also if it would occur rapidly moderately or minimally 
So their subgroups were one was a rapidly progressing subgroup which consists of 8% of people and in one year around 0.1 to 1 mm was lost. Next was moderate group which comprises around 81% of people and here 0.5 to 0.05 mm was lost per year. Next coming to minimally or no progressive diseases which comprises of 11% of people and this was from 0.05 to 0.09 mm was lost. Now coming to mechanism of bone destruction. Okay, Now this bone destruction is happening. You will think why is this happening? This can happen via two factors. Okay, Imagine this is the bacterial plaque. Okay, this can release some factors, this can damage the tooth. So, this is one factor and next one will be, you. Uh, everybody knows that once there is some inflammation or something, our host will try to protect us from it by releasing some mediators and all. So, the second one would be the host response. So, bacterial plaque products, what they do is that they will actually... Uh, Con they will actually increase okay, the conversion of progenitor cells into more of osteoclast. Okay, more of some cells called osteoclast. Okay, and they will also stimulate the gingival cells okay, to release some mediators which will in turn do the same job. That is, it will increase the progenitor cells into more of osteoclast. And one more function what they do is that they will inhibit the progenitor cells to convert to some cells called osteoblasts. They are bone forming cells. No, they will inhibit this process thereby decreasing its number as well as reducing its action. Okay. Next coming to what is called host response. So now we have uh, saw what is bacterial plaque products can do. So now let's see what happens to host response. Okay. Here um, we all know that there is bacterial plaque here. Yes. And this is producing the host response. Now this host response is produced by our inflammatory cells like uh, lymphocytes, fibroblasts and macrophages. All these will produce what is called prostaglandins okay, and its progenitors IL-1 alpha, IL-1 beta and TNF alpha. All these factors will be produced which will in turn what it will do? It will stimulate bone resorption. Okay. 